Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm art journaling on a pumpkin. Now, this pumpkin started out just as a normal, average, everyday pumpkin. And I didn't wash it, I didn't clean it, I didn't prep it, I just started painting on it. Other people were carving and doing all of that work, and I just wasn't into putting that kind of effort into a pumpkin this so year. So while everybody else was carving away on their pumpkins, I was painting mine. But that's the only supply that I had up there was paint, so I couldn't fully art journal it there. But that's a good thing. Actually an oops, and what's the opportunity in it? It's the fact that now I get to put on camera the rest of it. So just imagine putting a bunch of random color on a pumpkin. Clearly not a lot of thought went into it, just like I would do an art journal background. And now you're going to see how I finish up my art journal page or how I add those layers to it here on camera. So you're going to see some scribble journaling. You're going to see how I created papers that matched it using the jelly plate and then created a very, very colorful, totally me kind of pumpkin for the holidays. Best part is because I didn't carve, this thing's not going to rot nearly as quickly. So maybe it'll even last past Halloween. Well, enough of my talking. Come take a look and see how I art journaled on the pumpkin. So here's the pumpkin. It's got a bunch of layers of paint on it, and I'd like to tell you that this was really complex, but not really. Most of it was applied with brushes and cosmetic sponges, and after I put some on, then I'd streak some more on it. Very much like doing an art journal. And I had these bigger patches of color, and I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but everybody else was working on pumpkins, and I just wasn't into carving it, so I just decided to paint my pumpkin. And since this really kind of hits me as an art journal background, I'm going to art journal my pumpkin. So any place I have big spots like this, it says to me, put some scribble journaling. So that's what I'm doing using a Pico embellisher and my pumpkin. Now I have to tell you, if you've ever art journaled a pumpkin before, they're kind of an odd shape. And also too, the paint scratch, scrapes scratches off of it. Got a little tongue tied there. So it kind of clogs up my Pico embellisher because I'm kind of scratching it into the surface, but... When I can get the pin back in the top, totally unplugs it, and I can go back to scribble writing back with the Pico embellisher. And all I'm doing is kind of turning this gently and gingerly because, well, it's all still wet, so depending on what I do, I don't want to smear the stuff that's underneath it. And I gotta say, working on a pumpkin, which is kind of an imperfect shape, has made it extra fun to kind of turn this and move it around and see what's going where. Well, I'm all about sparkle and shimmer and, well, I just couldn't hold myself back here using some glitter paste from Viva. Now I put a little bit on and that was really my plan was just to have a little hint of it and then I couldn't stop myself. I just kept adding more and letting it get caught in the crevices and the channels of the pumpkin. The same way if you had a bunch of gesso that had a lot of texture on it on an art journal page, that's how this stuff was catching on the pumpkin. But notice I'm doing the handle. I'm just going to offer you a suggestion should you decide to do this. Do the handle last. The reason for that is, is the handle is sometimes used to, I don't know, hold the pumpkin, move the pumpkin. So let's just say there's glitter on my hands and less on the stem than when I started. But I just couldn't help adding more and more glitter around this thing. So I wanted to make sure I got it all over it. I mean, we're talking all the sides, adding more, pretty much like a five-year-old. I just couldn't stop with the glitter. So guess what? I didn't. I added more. Well, one of the things I want to do is create a banner that says Happy Halloween on it, but I need the papers that match my pumpkin just perfectly. Oddly enough, people don't make papers and sell them to me in advance of exactly what I need before I know I even need it. Well, that's not going to be a problem because I'm just going to use the jelly plate to make some papers that I'm going to cut up. So I started with a couple of colors that I thought would go well with my pumpkin here. And then I'm going to put a couple of stencils on it and just get those patterns going. The stencils that I'm using are my um, Circles Laramie and the Iron Grate Laramie. And that first one, that first pull, that's really just so I can get this next one. This is the one that I'm really after. It's going to have a little hint of pattern to it and a lot of color. Because if I just simply painted with a paintbrush and painted it, it wouldn't be nearly as interesting. And by the way, I'm going to be cutting this stuff up, so nothing here has to be perfect. It's extremely forgiving. As I'm doing this because I've got this amount of paint out, I'm going to keep making prints until I've used up all of my paint. 
So I've got my stencils, I've got my jelly plate, and I've got a bunch of paper, and I'm just gonna keep going until, well, I'm out of paint. So I'm making more paper than what I actually need to make a banner for this pumpkin. Oh, and by the way, that was the first print that, you know, it's kind of my, I don't usually like my first prints, but if I layer a couple of first prints together, all of a sudden, I like to like it a whole lot more because the pattern just gets even more interesting to me. And of course, this is what I'm really after. Gonna have lots of color and little bits and hints of pattern in it. Now, if you've never used the jelly plate before, it is a fantastic tool to make pattern paper or colored paper, however you wanna call it. I call them pattern paper because you're making patterns with colors and shapes and textures and all kinds of stuff. There are about a billion zillion different ways you can create with these things. Okay, I might be exaggerating there a bit, but I haven't run out of new and different ways to use this thing. It's constantly surprising me and exciting me with what it can do. Now, if you're brand new to this or you're not very familiar with a jelly plate, I've got a bunch of resources over on my blog at acolorfuljourney.com all about getting started with the jelly plate, including some free downloadable videos too. So what I'm doing here with this one, I decided I really like that print, so I'm setting that one aside and grabbing a fresh piece of paper here. And as I'm pushing this down, I am gonna push the paper into the stencil because it's gotta get to the point where the paper makes contact with the paint. So that's why you'll see me kind of working it over there and got lots and lots of pattern on that one. But what I really want is what's under here for the banners because I want something that has a solid color. Now, just because I want the solid color doesn't mean I don't love the other prints. It's just for right now, for this project, this is the kind of stuff that I want. So here are all the prints, nice and dry. I've picked out the ones that I think are gonna meet my needs for this. And what I wanna do is turn them all into stickers because I want them to be adhesive to save me some time on the backside. I'm gonna turn the whole thing at once using the Xyron Creative Station into a giant sticker. I kind of like to do things the fast and easy way, and this thing is super fast and easy. All you do is put the paper in, crank it through, cut off the edges. It comes with a little blade there. Peel off your protective cover, and now, magically, it is a sticker. So I've got three of the sheets that I've run through the Xyron so that they're stickers, and I've got these letters that I'm going to use to make the banner to spell out Happy Halloween. I want to make sure that my banner sections that I cut off are about as wide as the letters. And I don't want this white stuff over here. I worked so hard to put all this color on this paper. I certainly don't want white space. So I've now got an idea of how wide I want each strip to be. Notice the precision with which I am measuring. This is called the eyeball way of measuring. And then I'm just gonna cut a strip straight across. Am I going perfectly straight? Probably not but it's way close enough for what I'm gonna be doing here. And now I'm just gonna to continue to cut the rest of these into strips. Once I've got that done, now it's time to cut all that white space off because those little bits, those tails of white are actually going to cause me problems. So I am just going to get rid of them so I don't have to worry about them. So I've got the strips of paper cut there, my letters, and you can see the baker's twine that I'm gonna use. But I don't want these letters to be white. I want them to be a color. So I am gonna use a piece of the Xyron backing paper. It's the most wonderful non-stick backing because those are self-adhesive stickers. If I put them on paper, I'm gonna give up some of their stickiness and I don't wanna do that. And this is why I always try and save some of the backing paper that you peel off the sticker back of the Xyron stuff because it really is super handy and you have these nice big pieces of it so that you can put all sorts of stuff on here. Well, so I'm gonna take the paint and I could use a brush, crazy thought. Instead, I'm just gonna grab my finger and see if I like how the color works with this. I'm really liking the color. We'll see how it looks against the orange. If that works for me, then I'm gonna paint the rest of the letters that I need that color. So I'm gonna grab a piece, see what it looks like against it, and we have a winner. That's the color I'm gonna go with. So I've transferred all of the letters onto that nonstick backing that I've saved off of the Xyron and actually did pull out a brush for this many letters. I will break down and actually use a brush. Because of the fact that you've got the wax paper, whatever this stuff is, when it peels off, it kind of curls up because, well, they intended for you to throw it away, but why waste something when it's so handy? That I actually put some tape down to kind of hold it in place 
while I am doing a very precise and careful job painting my letters. Yeah, no precision happening here. Going all over the place. These are not going to be identical. It's not going to be perfect. And that's exactly what I want because nothing on this pumpkin is identical, perfect, lined up, even, etc. So once these are all painted, I'm going to set them aside and now it's time to get the banner part ready. So I've cut a piece off and now what I'm going to do is peel off the backing to reveal the sticker. And this is permanent adhesive, so it's super sticky. I'm going to grab a piece of that baker's twine and I am going to trap the baker's twine right in the stickiness of this. Going to pick the H to start with. I'm actually going to go in order. Crazy thought here. And I notice that it's not right at the bottom. That will be important to remember in a moment because I'm going to have a hard time remembering that. And then what I'm going to do is put the twine on it and then fold it around the twine. So basically this is now attached to the twine thanks to all the sticky. But wait, you'll see that the back doesn't line up. It's not as long. And guess what? That's actually what I was going for. That way it's a little bit sticky on the back side, so that'll help hold it in place when I put it on the pumpkin. Now I'm just going to make a couple of slits, and now what I've got is the first banner done for the first letter, or flag, whatever you want to call them on these things. And now I'm going to keep doing this. Now if you're doing a bunch of something, like I've got a bunch of letters here, the first one I'm usually pretty careful about, and I know what I'm doing the second one, I'm feeling pretty good about, like I know what I'm doing, but wait till you see what happens in a couple of letters. So I'm going to set that off to one side. I'm going to fold it to about the right, see how I measure it by just holding it right next to it. And then I'm going to cut off any excess on the side because I had no idea what the exact size of these was going to be. And hopefully I'm going to remember to cut that off of the side before I actually stick it on the twine because once it goes on the twine, it's much, much harder to get the sides cut down. But see, ah, see, I did remember, I almost forgot, but I did remember at the last minute. This way it's trimmed down to just the right size for that letter A. Now I'm gonna put the twine on it, fold it over, and my second letter is attached, but oh no, wait, it's imperfect. There's some of the stuff sticking out from the back that you can see, and that's not very attractive. Magically, it's just scissors, you trim it off. And here I come in for making the tails on the band, the flag, and now I'm ready to go on to the next letter. At this point, I gotta tell you, I'm feeling pretty, pretty cocky. I've had two go really, really well, and so now it's time to do number three. And this is about the point where I get into a whole lot of trouble, because I feel like, hey, I know what I'm doing. I don't really have to pay attention to what I'm doing. And so I'm just gonna put those letters on there, because on the last letter, remember, I kind of didn't remember to cut off the edges, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut those edges off. I'm so proud of myself for remembering that. So I've got that done, but can you see what I've kind of goofed up already? This is going to be a problem for me, but luckily it's just an oops, and it's an easy one to fix. So as I put it here, I go, oops, there's no place for me to cut the tail to make the cute little banner flag part. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to pull these up. It's not like these have the greatest sticky in the world for those self-adhesive letters, so I'm just going to pull them up and reposition them. But my lesson has been learned, and I actually won't forget this for the rest of this project because I know to move those letters up, not at the bottom, but up a little bit higher. It's also going to help that I'm going to line up the letters next to each other because that's really going to be my big reminder because you saw me almost do it again with the Y but I caught myself because I'm looking at the other letters. I'm going to trim up the edges, and then I'm going to continue on putting the rest of these on. One word of warning or caution, whatever you want to call it, um, about the adhesive on the Xyron piece is it is a permanent adhesive. So you saw how easily I pulled those letters up off when I had them in the wrong spot. Yeah, I can't do that with the permanent adhesive. So once I close those flags over the twine, it is what it is. So that's why if something's not lined up perfectly, all I'm going to do is just come along with scissors and trim it up afterwards. Now since I've left little bits of the flag still sticky, what that means is I need to be somewhat aware of that as I'm doing this. So I don't want to push it down onto the paper. It can rest on the paper and I can pull it right up, but if I actually push it down on the paper, it's not coming back up. 
So as I put this last letter here on the twine, well now it's time to cut the tails into them and with some very imprecise scissor work here because it's not like I've measured anything, it's not like any of these are going to be identical, and guess what? I actually prefer it that way. So you saw how I did happy and here is happy Halloween. Halloween done the same way, just a whole lot more letters. Now it's time to put it on the pumpkin. There have been many times in my life where I have wanted to have three hands and I gotta tell you, this is so one of them because holding this very strangely round object or round-like object, as I'm trying to put this on here, also keep it on camera so that you can see it. Yeah, it's just gonna require a whole lot more hands than what I have. So the angle, we're just gonna have to work with it here as I try and decide which side of my pumpkin is the best for the banner as if, and I'm gonna try and put a paint bottle back there as if I can rest it on that. Yeah, this sucker is not gonna stay by itself. I am just gonna have to figure out a way to get three hands. As I'm putting this on here, I, do I want this drapey thing? And I really think that's exactly what I want. So I am gonna put it on with some star pins. I don't have to glue anything because really what's gonna stick to this? So by sticking some pins in it, that way it'll hold the banner just where I want it. Or so I think this is where I want it. As I'm pushing the pins in, I want to push them straight down. That way it looks like the star is more flush against the uh, pumpkin. Now this is really hard to hold and move with just two hands, so I apologize for the angle, but you've got the idea of what's going on here. So as I'm trying to decide exactly where I want it to go, and of course, you know, this is the equivalent of dressing the queen for how I'm going to put this on here. Um, it is a little nice that I have that little bit of sticky left on the bottom of the flags. That way, that little bit of area that was had the exposed Xyron adhesive, that way it helps hold it to the pumpkin and hold it exactly where I want it. So here's what it looks like. And I got to tell you, I don't like it this way. I don't like it this way at all. It totally wasn't what I was after. So what do I do then? I'm going to pull the pins out. This is almost like a cork board or a bulletin board. You can stick the pins in and pull them out. Nobody will ever know where it was. And I thought, hey, I'll wrap the banner around the top. And I got to tell you, no, I really didn't like that idea. So I moved it up. So I just moved that top banner way up. And this is the point at which I really thought a third hand would be quite handy. And yes, pun intended on that one. So as I'm putting this up here, yep, it's just going to have to go flat. Apologize for that angle as I put those final pins into this pumpkin. Now, everybody else, like I said, when they made their pumpkins, had carved and spent all this time and gotten all kinds of goopy and messy. And, well, I've done that enough times that I wanted something different. The other perk to this is this pumpkin is not going to rot nearly as quickly as theirs are so that this might even become just a happy day pumpkin. So after Halloween, I'm probably going to take the word Halloween off of it and I can use it, well, until this sucker rots and we'll see how long that takes. Well, thanks for joining me for today's play. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you enjoyed it and you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll always know when I have a new video out. And of course, I'm always hanging out over on my blog at acolorfuljourney.com where I've got not only a bunch of blog posts, but I've also got a free newsletter with some goodies waiting for you when you join. Thank you for being a part of this colorful journey.